So, if you're anything like me, you still have a Dell Inspiron 660 sitting around. And at this point, you've probably already built a new PC with a Ryzen and a Radeon or Nvidia graphics card, and you're wondering, what do I do with this guy? Well, judge me all you want, but in today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Linux on your old Dell Inspiron 660. You've seen it go through a GPU, SSD, and RAM upgrade. Now all that's left is an OS upgrade. You are watching No Eye Protection Productions Builds. Step one, grab a flash drive. Or a flash drive that you need to empty. Step two, plug it into a Windows machine. All right, so next we go to the interwebs and search for Rufus. This is the official site to download Rufus and you're probably wondering at this point, okay, what the hell is Rufus? Why do I need this? So, okay, so Rufus is a standard uh, application. Rufus is a standard app that is used for it's creating images to install Windows, to install Linux. Um, basically, you can't install a operating system with just files to, you can't just copy them to a disk. So this is basically creating a partition. So it's kind of like putting files together in a special structure instead of putting them, like if you were to download install Windows or download install this di distro Linux, you can't just copy it to the disk, it wouldn't work. So with this file, we can create a special structure of files that will allow us to install our operating system, a special structure called an ISO. See right here we have .iso. So we're gonna install this, download Rufus 3.13. And you'll always do this, you'll always do this to make an image to install Windows. Like if you have a new copy of Windows, you would make this. And then you just go to, you just click on yes. Okay. And now we have Rufus. It's just an application that runs. You can run it. It looks like you can run it from a uh, from a disk, like a flash drive. You can place it in your documents folder if you want to. But basically what we do is we combine this with the download of installing the stuff. So next we go to, we're gonna do Linux Mint XFCE 64-bit, download it. And then we'll go to the official website. And this is where you download Linux Mint. And we're doing the XFCE, which XFCE means that it's like a, it's like a special dumbed down version of Linux Mint. You have different versions of Linux Mint, like Linux Mint Cinnamon has lots of features and it's kind of like you would be able to, I mean, have things like you would in Windows, like the Microsoft Paint and stuff like that and you know all those little accessories but even xfce mint has great accessories i can't see anything inadequate about it as far as i've used it it's it's the first and only distro that i've used for personal use or our business uh, so we're gonna try we're we're gonna try a special these are the different places you can download it i know getting into the Linux world can be a little confusing, so this video can hopefully help you out. Um, Amir is a place to download a Linux Mint distro, and this first one is considered the most popular. You might have some other ones listed, like universities and colleges that will have their own backup version of Windows so that they can use it in their programs. So I kind of like those. Uh, we could do like Harvard School of Engineering and uh, get their version that they have backed up. And so this is an ISO, so that's why. So it downloads you the ISO and you need Rufus to use the ISO. So we have the two to go together and make it all awesome and stuff. So we'll just kind of pause the video until that downloads because it's taking an hour for some reason. So I guess we're done with the video until we'll just, we'll just We'll just cut back to the video after this. We'll come back in a little bit. Okay, so yeah, I should know that an ISO takes a long time to download, 
but this one turned out to be a little bit over a gigabyte. So really, I guess it just depends a little bit on your internet connections. What you want to do when that's done is pick out the empty flash drive that you had earlier and use Rufus to create the bootable device. Essentially what's going to happen is Rufus brings up this menu that you see on the main page where you select the ISO, boot selection, then select, make sure it's on MBR, and then from there most of the settings are generic, FAT32 is okay, 4096, and from there it's just start. So hit that power button, get everything fired up, then in Dell Inspiron, remember it's F2, always F2 to get to the BIOS. F2 or F1 or delete, and there we're, we're in. So once in the BIOS, we're gonna go to boot and check out these and make sure that the USB that we used to create the Rufus, to create the bootable device is going to come up next, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Yuck. Essentially getting, um, we could make it first or, we, or in this case, my Linux distro was first, so it's not going to be there after, I, it's not going to be there in your case if you're doing a reinstall or if you've uninstalled Windows or something like that. So since I have Linux installed right now, I'm actually going to move that up to its for up to the first slot and get let's see second one will be I'm going to there now our USB flash drive is a first bootable device so we'll get to the Linux installer that way okay exit save changes and reset and don't do what I did and make sure it's plugged in. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so do make sure that the flash drive is plugged in before reset, otherwise something else is going to happen, but I shut it down and I got my flash drive put in, so we'll see, we'll see if we get to the installer. Also make sure your all your files are backed up. Okay, so here we are. This is, if you can see the details and such, this is the GNU Grub. The Grub is what comes up first to configure the install so these are for other advanced users we want the first setting start Linux Mint 20 and it sounds like it kind of sounds like you're starting Linux for the first time but um, I was actually if, if you're confused right now don't worry I was a little bit confused the first time I ran this too because it looked like I was starting up Linux already. But basically what this is, is you get the Linux Mint desktop. You're going to you're gonna see the Linux Mint desktop, but inside on the Linux Mint desktop is a program called Install Linux or something along those lines. And then we'll run through the setup. It'll run through some commands going all the way through the screen like a million miles per hour light speed. Light speed, epicness, and then we'll be install on our way to installing Linux Mint. So the reason I'm doing this today is because we're gonna put in new SSD just for a little smidgen of extra performance. SSD upgrade, I should say. So let's get that out of the way real quick. All right, now we've got our upgraded SSD installed. Now let's head to the boot device and get started with installing Linux Mint.
right, lads, there you have it, setting up Linux on your Dell Inspiron. If you guys like this video, smash that like button. And if you want to see more, you can subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so you get notified for future videos. Videos like this on PCs, gaming, audio production, video production, and everything of that nature. And we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.